I'm almost scared to start talking about the next piece because I want to make sure I do it justice. We're going to play for you Dmitry Shostakovich's quartet number eight, which he wrote in the year 1960. In three days, in three days he completed this entire work. And this followed a couple of big events in Shostakovich's life. One is that he found out that he had a debilitating muscle condition that would end up um, taking a lot from him at the end of his life. And he reluctantly had to join the Communist Party. Now, Shostakovich's relationship to the Communist Party throughout his life um, has been written about in many, many, many books. Um, he was a personal um, opponent of Stalin, or still, at least Stalin saw it um, that way. Um, he actually, there's a famous story that after the premiere of um, Shostakovich's famous opera, Lady Macbeth of the Mitsensk district, if anyone here speaks Russian, I said that wrong, I'm really sorry. Um, the day after, there was a review in the Russian, um, in, in the Pravda, which was the newspaper of the Communist Party, and there's an op-ed butchering that opera, which is believed to actually have been written by Stalin himself. So that was the level of relationship between um, Shostakovich and Stalin. But this is after Stalin passes away, um, but the relationship there did not improve. Now, if you look at the, uh, some of you actually might be close enough to see, the dedication at the top of the score um, reads, in memory of the victims of fascism and war. Um, and it's the basic way exactly meant by that, so let's see if we can find out what he meant by that. So the main motive, the, main, the musical um, molecule, if you like, upon which every single movement is structured, is the signature of Shostakovich himself. He's not the first composer to do this, Bach did it as well. So in English, you can take every single letter and transform it into a note. So the first note is D for Dimitri. The second note is S for the Shostakovich, but in, in German, lettering S means E flat. And the next one is C, also part of the Shostakovich. And then the next one is H, which again in German is B. So. <coughs> and that motive comes in almost every single piece that Shostakovich wrote. That's his kind of signature. But here it's not just part of the music, it's the main driving force of the entire piece. So let's see how that comes into play in very different uh, ways throughout this piece. So this is how the piece begins. The motive is going to be taken by each of the instruments in, in their turn. So that is a very painful and slow beginning. But it doesn't stay that way. Um, in the third movement, for instance, by the way, the movements flow seamlessly into each other in this piece. So there's no, it, it sounds like one big work of, of five movements. Um, so there's no clear ending between the movements, although you likely be able to tell when something new starts. The third movement, is some form of almost grotesque waltz. It's in three, like a waltz. And it takes this motive that we have, right? So if we take it up high, but we change the rhythm. Okay? So that's how it sounds in the third movement. Thank you. 
One more thing which is very ominous in this piece was um, part of Shostakovich's, again, relationship with the government and the Communist Party. And he was, at this point in his life, basically expecting them to come and get him. And he get some of his, there's letters that su suggest that he thought that this was his last piece of music that he's going to write. Are, are there any people who lived in Soviet Russia in the audience? So, um, I, 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 I've, I've, I've played this piece in the past with um, also people who came to Israel from Russia. Um, and apparently, there was a known thing that when the KGB would come knocking at the door, people would, they would c come with uh, what they called these black cards, they called them the black crow. And they would come in the middle of the night and knock on the door three times, three loud knocks. And it sounds just about the beginning of the fourth movement, like this. Shostakovich's children disagree what he meant by the victims of fascism and war. But seeing how he wrote to his friend that this is um, kind of a piece that he dedicated to himself, he quotes here most of his major symphonies, concertos, and operas. This was um, Shostakovich writing his own um, eulogy. So the, the victims of fascism and war here are just the coach himself.
Thank you.